Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Sunday Morning Coffee with Bridget. I am waking up again this morning in Minnesota, my home state. Some of you who have watched me on Bridget Inspired on Instagram or Bridget Inspired on Facebook, you know that I've been traveling this week. I went to Texas, Houston mostly. I did spend a couple of nights in Gal- near Galveston. Um, in a gorgeous beach house. Yeah, I was there for the eclipse and the full moon, and I know that's insane. (laughs) It was also pretty amazing. The energy of the earth, and we had a fire on the beach, and the water and the moonlight. Oh, it was just, it was a lot of intensive infusion of clearing energy. And I'm still as is always with full moon energy, with eclipse energy, I am definitely feeling that, the aftershocks of that. And it's, (laughs) we'll see. We will see how things um, continue to push up to the surface as a result of initiating that kind of a clearing. Because that's basically what happens, you know. You initiate the clearing. You invite it in and it seems like, oh, I'm good. It's the, the full moon is passed or the eclipse is passed or whatever astrological event is happening is passed. And here I am. I'm like, oh, okay. I fared pretty well. Well, guess what? It will push things up to the surface. And you know what? That's absolutely okay with me right now. So I was thinking about uh, when I came home yesterday. I came downstairs to my room and um, was putting some things away, some card decks that I had brought in and journals and things and a book. And I immediately noticed in the living room downstairs that the guinea pig cage was missing. Oh, yes, we are one of those families that have had a guinea pig cage forever because there were two guinea pigs that we inherited from one of my oldest kids, her friend. And it was, of course, a sad sob story. And in, I think it was 2017 or 16, we got this guinea pig, these two guinea pigs. Well, one of them um, died uh, about two years ago. And the other one lived for like eight years, which I guess is a long time in guinea pig land. And... (laughs) I noticed the cage was missing, so I asked, I said, hey, what happened to the guinea pig? Oh, I said, oh my God, did the guinea pig die when I was gone? And the answer was yes. And I'm not going to lie, I kind of felt a lot of relief. I know this seems kind of silly. Like, why, Bridget? Why would you be so relieved when the guinea pig dies? Because it's been something that has had to have been tended to, taken care of, a responsibility, a duty, an obligation, long after my oldest kid moved out, an inherited responsibility. And we're going to talk about that today as our topic for Sunday morning coffee, that relief of responsibility, that sense of freedom that comes when Something is taken off your plate, and it just instantly feels lighter. I I can't explain it. It sounds like such a silly thing, but it makes a tremendous impact because now it feels like things are being cleared away again, little by little. It's kind of how when, if you have children when they get their driver's license and then eventually there's a car that they can drive and you don't have to drive them to work anymore or you don't have to drive them to school anymore. It's like that. When they can drive themselves, then the responsibility shifts from you to an independence to them. So it's this, this, this change process from responsibility into independence And there's this freedom that comes with the release of responsibility. So I was curious about this. I was like, is responsibility a mindset, a mind frame? Is it something we inherit? And my gut response was, yes, it is something we learn. It is a learned belief system or pattern of behavior, which there is to some degree responsibility in everyone's life, everybody regardless of how 
small it is or how great it feels. And I thought, okay, then is that the reason then why people get stuck or feel stuck in their lives? Because as you know, I am in the middle of a great change, a massive transition in my life. And it is a long and slow unfolding process. And it takes time for that kind of thing to happen. And regardless of how fast that changes itself, there is, like I said, with the full moon stuff and the eclipse stuff, there are these after effects. There are, it takes a while for things to push up to the surface to be addressed and dealt with. And especially when your change is affecting and impacting people around you, which it often does, that can create new challenges. So this energetic I think of responsibility is part of what we could blame if we needed to blame something or point the finger at something like a cause. It would be this responsibility causes stuckness because of the mindset. Do you see the belief system about responsibility? So some of you know that I work with Divine Feminine and I do it in just really beautiful archetypal ways and in that archetypal work, it is this, this idea of responsibility is more about self-autonomy or the power word that's used is sovereignty, an independent way of claiming power and moving through the world and doing what needs to be done by being you, independent of the circumstances, situations, or other duties and, and responsibilities around you. This doesn't mean you avoid or negate those things. It means that the way that you move through the world, you are centered in your sovereignty. And that makes a huge difference because the energetic of responsibility in the divine feminine, in the archetypal world, is much more of a devotion in service to in service for and with, not because of this duty obligation pressure of the ego mind or societal norms, but rather by choice of the sovereign person who is centered in her awareness of her knowing of what matters to her and those relationships around her that could be seen or perceived as responsibilities to tend to. In fact, she, the divine feminine, receives this knowing that there is an opportunity for beautiful devotion and service to those relationships, thus fulfilling what we would consider in the mind's eye or in our mental system of thinking, our structure of thinking, that is a responsibility. I am responsible. Okay, so that's one sort of perspective about this. The other is, The responsibility piece is like the, but I have to, I should, I have to, I should. The I have to is I should. Where do those come from? The I have to do my homework before I go to bed or the I have to clean the kitchen after I make a meal or the I have to go to church or I have to go to school. Who At some point in our lives, we we have these... um, I have tos, I shoulds that come in. And the I have tos and I shoulds give us a perspective of how what we are doing or the way that we are approaching something or someone, a relationship or a task, it could be either, is to say that there is an underlying resistance, not even resistance, but an underlying desire to not do that. There is a friction, that's right, that's a good word, a friction between the task and or the relationship person and us and our core value in our heart, our core value in our heart, not our belief in our mind based upon the the thoughts and the passing down of other people's values, our families, our social structures, our lifestyles, etc. But Within ourselves, in our hearts, in our value system, there is friction between that action or potential action, that thought of action that, per, that, that comes in 
And the friction between that and your value of what you really would rather do instead. Now, it's not just about a system of I want to do this or I want to do that. I'm only going to do what serves me. That's not what I'm saying at all. This is about perception and understanding the nature in which you are going about your life. Is it from a set of obligations or responsibilities that feel heavy? The energetic of responsibility feels really heavy. And we have been trained to utilize that almost like a a shame tool or a guilt tool or a power trip from somebody that doesn't even exist anymore from that grandmother or that parent, et cetera, in your daily life. And now here you are with the opportunity to be a sovereign queen sitting on your throne of center. That's what we say in the archetypal world. If you're more interested, if by the way, you're interested in that divine feminine archetypal work, check out Priestess Presence on Facebook or priestesspresence.com. And you can dig deeper into that. Again, that's priestesspresence.com. And now here we are at this moment where for me, it was the guinea pigs gone. Okay. That is one less layer of responsibility that now is in my field, which lightens up then the evolution of the change and the transformation that I'm going through. And it seems so little, right? Like it's a peripheral thing. It's a guinea pig. But the cage and location of the cage is downstairs where my room is. And it's in my living room space, which I want to, which I have chairs for. And now it was sitting on this old dresser that I'd like to paint and use in my room and bring some these beautiful big burnt orange chairs that I got from a friend of mine into the living room to create just a cozy sitting space for myself. And I'm like creating space for me. So when the guinea pig is not here anymore, there's not a barrier or an obstacle in my physical form. And then it caused me this morning, as soon as I woke up the first day back in Minnesota, I woke up I had to put some chapstick on because my lips woke up dry this morning. Come on, what is with the dry weather? And I have a humidifier just blaring next to me. Oh my gosh. I miss the humidity of Texas. Oh, my skin just loves warmer weather. Let me just say, hello, Florida. I miss you too, Florida. Yes, I do. Although I don't miss the weather delays, which is what happened yesterday. <laughs> Again, if you, if you watch Bridget Inspired on Instagram or Bridget Inspired on Facebook, you get to see all these photos and the, the beach reels that I made and the funny, um, I watched a movie yesterday on the airplane coming back because we had like an hour delay sitting on the tarmac for a couple of different random reasons, which was kind of funny, but also just like, yeah, okay, figures. And I watched um, Sex in the City, the original movie, you know, Carrie Bradshaw and the one where she and Big were getting married and then he wasn't going to show up and there was this whole miscommunication. And so for six months they didn't talk and she was devastated and this whole thing, like wouldn't get out of bed and all that. And in the end, they end up getting married at just a small little wedding and all that. Because it turns out he really loved her. He just wasn't able to do the whole big thing or he was just he had a lot of relationships it's a whole thing anyway so I'm sidetracked (laughs) sorry this is what it's like to just hang with me okay off on a tangent but my point is this energy of responsibility duty obligation does keep us stuck it does but it's us it is you and I that's doing that is our perception of that relationship, our perception of that life situation. That is what's keeping us stuck. And we use responsibility as an excuse to stay stuck. To stay stuck. And then we use the responsibility to to excuse our vices to excuse our addictions, to excuse our poor behavior, to excuse our lack of considerate action or response to other people's needs. We use it as a, uh, an out. Oh, I'm, I have to do this. Oh, I have to do that. We use it as an out. When really it's not never an out. It's a temporary reprieve. It's a temporary reprieve. It's like catching your breath and then having to go right back into the water and it's rough seas. 
So if you can in any way, open up your heart to the value of what the responsibility represents to you and feel into it at the level of your value. What you value, what you value, what you value, what matters to you, what matters to you, what matters to you, because that's going to make all the difference in your energy and in your energetic field. If you can lighten the load of responsibility and and step in to those experiences, circumstances, situations, or people with a understanding of service or devotion, then it's going to make all the difference in the way you move through the world. And it won't be a heavy duty or responsibility. It will be a choice. Because even though it is a duty or responsibility, it is a choice. You don't have to clean the kitchen before you go to bed. Trust me, those pots and pans will be there in the morning. That's what happens here. That's going to happen. It's just a matter of when you manage or take care of it. it does, it's not like the world is going to fall apart or end. But we make up these stories in our head that that's exactly what's going to happen. If I don't do it, who will? Stop doing it and find out. And if the answer is nobody, then you know. Then you know. Then you can make choices based upon the minimum that needs to occur or happen in order to maintain a level of flow in your life of energy so you're not just focused on doing some menial thing, some just basic thing all the time and using that basic thing to avoid doing the deeper, more meaningful work in your life. It could be emotional work. It could be healing work. You might better better spend that time journaling and allowing yourself to be aware of your own inner feelings, to do some EFT or tapping, to do some gentle yoga stretches, to listen to a great song and journal while you're listening to that great song. Things that can really support and promote your energy wellness. To encourage you to explore more deeper what matters to you in your life. So that you can create and co-create with God, the creator, source, universe, the life that you truly are in most alignment with. And you won't know when you are weighed down by responsibility, but it is not. Responsibilities are not things that people put on you. They are projections or illusions. They are holograms. They are not actually set in stone, carved in stone. And I know some of you are yelling at me, probably thinking, well, but I have kids. I do too. I have four of them. <laughs> you want to go down with that? You want to throw, throw down with that with me? Let's do it. It is our job and our responsibility as mature adults, the parent role, to empower our children to be independent, even though that is hard on us at times because there's a level of unknown because you know they're going to fuck things up and they always do. And that's what we did. And that's what we still continue to do. Newsflash, as an adult, you fuck things up all the time. And you have friends and family that you can talk through things with. So when you release your kids into the energetic of an independent or sovereign nature, yeah, they're going to screw up. But you're training them for the world. And they have to have life experiences, especially when they're under your safe umbrella and you're close to them and you live near them and you can help them out. That is exactly the time for them to trial and error life. And when you feel so responsible for them or are trying to constantly protect them, it creates so much pressure for you. I'm speaking from experience. This is a message for me too. I have done this with my older children for sure and probably my youngest right now, yeah. And it doesn't help me or them. It drives them nuts. They feel stuck because of my sense of responsibility. And I feel stuck because of my sense of responsibility. Now, whose issue is that really then? You tell me all about how you're so responsible and have to be present for other people. You just tell me all about that right now. It's the way in which you operate from the value of what matters to you, not the expectation of some old ass story that was implanted from your grandparents to your parents to you. It's not about that. Show up and be present. Value sovereignty and service in a beautiful way so that the people that you're loving are free. So that you, who are you, are loving you, right? So you are free. And that is the magic. So this is Bridget. Thanks so much for listening to Sunday Morning Coffee with Bridget. I hope I've inspired your spirit today, filled you with hope, and encouraged you to live your life. It's your life after all, and you get to live it. Just live it.